Our question of the day tonight is uh, on the survey. Do you think Nick Frentes will go to jail? That is our question to the crowd. You can click on the link to entropy below the video if you'd like to vote. Uh, Richard, will, Rich will Nick Frentes uh, end up in jail because a subpoena for a committee of that kind is investigatory in nature, but it's often yes. a place where leverage is being used against the person so that he ends up saying something that he doesn't realize now, but eventually could be used against him. I... I think there is a very good chance that Nick Fuentes will end up in jail on a similar charge to Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Oath Keepers, uh, and that is seditious conspiracy. Um, I say this not, not necessarily because of the things you just mentioned, although that's, of course, true. Um, there is videotape of Nick Fuentes with a bullhorn saying, go into the Capitol. Oh, we're good. We're in the Capitol. They've stopped the counting of the votes. We're not leaving the Capitol until Donald Trump is president for another four years, and so on. You can go see it. I retweeted it uh, a year ago. I, I re-retweeted it again. It, it's pretty damning. I mean, yes, we do have a, 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 a charitable you know, free speech law in the United States. You can get away with a lot. You can say really bold stuff like, you know, one day we're going to go and round up those damn congressmen and throw them into a dungeon or something. You can say something like that because it's not an immediate direct threat. It's a kind of one day like claim. It's bold. It's maybe stupid, but it is protected in the First Amendment. You can't actively urge someone on who's in earshot to stop the counting of votes. You are engaging in the disruption of government. And that is sedition. Now, it's not, it's not treason. It's not a hanging crime or anything, but it could be 20 years. Um, you know, I, I was talking to someone today and I was thinking about this, like, you know, with, with Fuentes, he could get himself out of this by, give, by really cooperating with the J6 committee, giving them lots of stuff, et cetera. But I don't know if he could tell them something they don't know you know, or that they can't get by, the, that the FBI can't get by investigating his computer. So I don't know what exactly he has to give them. But we are clearly on a new stage of the J6 investigation. The first year of the investigation was rounding up low-hanging fruit. That is people who were in the Capitol, you know, the poor uh, QAnon shaman, fascinating man, um, I actually listened to a, to an interview of him and he was, he was actually seemed like kind of a good guy to be honest, although w wacky, mm -hmm. um, he's been rounded up. Um, you know, my girl Riley, uh, who stole, uh, Nancy Pelosi's laptop. Uh, there's, you know, I won't comment on whether I have a crush on her or not. Uh, but she's been <laughs> under house arrest. It goes on and on. They've gotten the low hanging fruit. And now they are going to big stuff. So one of the memes from the like alt light, you know, Trump, you know, idiots who are still doing this, like Darren Beatty or something. One of the memes was they haven't arrested Ray Epps. They haven't arrested Stuart Rhodes, who is a kind of boogeyman like figure. So they're they're kind of playing the optics game. They're saying that all, everyone there was good, but then you had these, these, the bad boogeyman. He must be an FBI agent or something like that. Well, there's no evidence for that. And the fact is, Stuart Rhodes has now been, been charged with seditious conspiracy. That is a 20-year sentence. Uh, so they are now moving on to a new stage. They've collected their evidence. It, this, the wheels of justice turn slowly. It's going to take a long time. Um, they have no doubt investigated the Bitcoin charge. And our Bitcoin donation, and they are looking into it. Now, I'll just say, I don't, I am not in the loop of any of this. I'm just looking at it from the outside. That Bitcoin donation looked a very much like a quid pro quo type donation. It just occurred at that time. There was ton, there were millions upon millions of dollars flowing in to the Stop the Steal movement and the Trump legal defense and all that. It just strikes me as some kind of thank you for your service type thing. Now, it, 
ostensibly it was done by a French, a French nationalist who committed suicide. Very, very possible that that's the case. It, just looking at it from the outside, I don't have evidence. It, it just does seem like a payoff because Nicholas Fuentes was absolutely decisive, maybe even indispensable in the Stop the Spiel movement. He was there very early on with Alex Jones, Ali Akbar, or Ali Alexander. They were in Georgia. They were riding around in Humvees. They were talking about the stolen election. Nick also has a really organic audience. Nick can get 10,000, 20,000 people watching a live stream live. He represents and kind of reflects the nature of this youthful right with the irony, the silliness, the denial, the jokes, the just totally immature behavior, the lack of a coherent ideology, the Trump fandom. He represents his fandom very well. And he was essential in getting this thing off the ground, getting juice behind it. And so I think he was paid off. That's just my view with no evidence. I'm simply looking at it from, it as, from a kind of cooey bono uh, standpoint. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you can have uh, two interpretations here. Uh, it was a moment of emotion. And it's very possible that a man about to commit suicide would be em emotional about all this and would want to support it exactly at this moment because that's a moment at which the crowds were very happy about Nick's work. Uh, the yes. other the other hypothesis is some nefarious foreign agent, maybe an undercover of the CIA, just rerouting money from the American government to incite more of this stuff so that eventually they can go after it. It could go. It could be a Fed, or it could be some billionaire or millionaire who who just wanted things to happen and just yeah. Really it was could a be Weave. Yeah, he could be Weave and the Anglin Group. Uh, who have always supported Nick. Uh, Weave, apparently, from one thing I read, he was in a chat room with this Frenchman who committed suicide. Um, Weave is up to no good and certainly does a lot of dirty tricks like this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he were behind it. So, you know, Weave is not a Fed. At least I don't have any reason to believe that. Um, but he, he is someone who is definitely deals in cryptocurrency and is definitely interested in inspiring things like January 6th. So if I were to just guess from the out, totally outside, totally without evidence, I'm not making a real allegation. I'm simply looking at it, thinking about who would want this, who could do this, et cetera. I would actually suggest Weave. Now, some people disagree with you on the chat, and I, I actually agree with you. I think, let's not forget that it's a crime to interfere with the, up, obstruct the government's work, and especially a vote of that importance, like the transition to a president. It's a highly symbolic thing, and blocking it is a crime, and therefore appealing to others to try to block it, or even saying on Twitter the next day after it happened that you're happy about it and that the siege was great. This, th those yes. are things that will be held against Nick. Now, just to represent what the crowd is saying, some people say bad take. Someone says, Richard doesn't understand. Nick only fears God. What would be your answer to this? I do understand that. I, I hopped on to Nick's uh, cozy.com stream or something last night and i couldn't take it but it, it was about five minutes where he was saying he only yeah he he the fbi isn't so scary because you know the real thing that scares him is eternal damnation and he's put his faith in jesus and so on uh yeah but what's your point i mean i i nick has clearly turned the alt-right into i mean and i turned I think Nick better represented than someone like me what the alt-right actually is. And he has, if he has added much of anything, it is the, the irony, the kind of lack of any kind of political coherence. Um, but he's also added, particularly of late over the past year, this, uh, the God stuff. The, um, I think there was one quote saying, your job isn't real your girlfriend isn't real. What's real is the crucifixion of Christ. And, and this is the true reality. Um, yeah, that's what he, I, I mean, I, I think he does believe that. Um, you know, good luck with that.
Now the <laughs> goal of this, say. the goal of this subpoena, I suppose, is the, the government. Well, the Democrats are interested in making a link between some money and some action because eventually they want to make a case of it larger than just i was on a speaker phone inciting people they want to make a case that there was some kind of managerial involvement here which would be dramatic in a criminal case yes now keep in mind this isn't a criminal case i mean this is a congressional inquiry so it, he is going to be under oath and it has the trappings of a legal case but it's not a criminal or a civil case uh but you know, one could only imagine that the DO, the Department of Justice and this committee are in some ways collaborating or kind of sending smoke signals or something like that. So, uh, you know, I, I do think that, you know, I've thought that he was in jeopardy of criminal prosecution for a year, ever since it happened. Everyone, when I tweeted that everyone was like oh seethe more cope more you're you're just jealous or whatever it's like i don't know how anyone at this point a year later can argue that he's not in serious jeopardy of prosecution he is period end of statement they would not be talking to him uh if it weren't if he weren't and so, the yeah. FBI has frozen uh, about, if I understand correctly, half a million dollars of his bank assets. And I think that the Democrats are wondering to what extent the Bitcoin money is fluid and to what extent essentially the FBI has been unable to seize Bitcoins because of its nature, because of the nature mm -hmm. of cryptocurrencies. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've heard all of this. I... I don't have much more to add, but yes, it, Bitcoin is a kind of wild card in all this. But I mean, I think a lot of, I think Nick's audience is organic. I would say that. Um, and I think a lot of that money, whether it's half a million or something, I think it's organic. I mean, I think it was done through super chats and, you know, I don't like Nick. I don't like what he says. I don't like his fans. I mean, I don't know what to say but I'm not gonna lie about any of them. I think it's an organic thing. I don't think those are all payoffs. Now the, the Bitcoin thing is very suspicious. I would just Absolutely. say that. And, and again, Ali Akbar was getting untold thousands or maybe millions by fundraising off Stop the Steal. Basically going to these boomers saying he's the last man standing you know, to prevent communism from the United States and, and so on. So. There was a lot of money. Trump himself raised tens of millions of dollars for legal defense. And so there was just, there was so much money flowing in and Nick was essential to this. So you saw the same guy, I think he gave like V dare 10 grand or something. so, you know, it was almost like he, he gave some pennies to the kind of like dumb right wing web zines that were ultimately supporting this, but kind of not essential in it, you know, cause V dare is not essential at all but nick really was essential he was he was indispensable he was decisive in the stop the steal movement and and j6